Hello everybody, this is Michael Campbell with Glossica, and I'm really excited to have here today uh, the chance at the Polyglot Conference to meet with uh, the founder and CEO of, the founder of Link and the CEO, his Co -founders. son Mark, Co -founders, uh, and yeah. Steve Kaufman, um, who have flown out from Vancouver, Canada to meet everybody at the conference here in, uh, in Fukuoka, Japan, mm -hmm. where we currently are. And so it's a pleasure to actually meet you in person for the first time. Otakai-sama, <laughs> otakai yeah, likewise. Uh, tell us a little bit about, um, I mean, for, for those of you who are watching, obviously on our channel know about the Glossika brand and probably know about the Link brand as well, um, but there's a lot of things that we do uh, that can help uh, language learners yeah. and the whole idea be behind Crashin, right. this N plus one, uh, I think it's a it's a really good way of learning. Mm -hmm. But what I really love about Link is that you have the storylines. Right. I mean, I think uh, I would like to learn more about about Glossika, the Glossika model. But uh, certainly, we need to get the language in us. Yes. In some way. Yeah. Some people want to start speaking earlier, practicing whatever they have learned. Uh, I try to hang back a little bit longer. Yeah. You shouldn't hang back too long. Yeah. Because you're going to improve once you start speaking. Yeah. But you do have to get the language in you, and that's what we do at Link, and I think that's what you do with, with Glossika. And you know, I, th I think it's a really good idea that once you, you go outside, I mean, you could be practicing at home, in front of a mirror, or just with your book, trying to say the things out loud, but when you go outside and you see that, that facial reaction from somebody, when they, their face lights up, they understand, but when it doesn't happen, you kind of get frustrated, like, oh wait, let me try, what did I do wrong? But that kind of uh, feedback loop actually helps you in, in, in those experiences too. Even the, the, the wrong things that you say actually stick with you and you, you learn things really well. The wrong things help you learn and the, the, when, you, when you succeed, when you, when you can communicate face to face, because in the end that's why you're learning a language, in the, you want to communicate and when you are, communi are able to communicate successfully with a native speaker, that's a pretty good feeling and that inspires you to do a little more, work a little harder, try to grow your language. Yeah, and the exciting thing is that it opens a world of uh, a new world to you, mm -hmm. uh, of a whole bunch of uh, people that you can now talk to and start to understand. I think the understanding part is just amazing. Because now, but, it, absolutely, comprehension is very important. But I think Mark's point is also very important, and this is one that you were making as well: is that when you get that positive reaction, that's very motivating. Oh, and yeah. we do want, we need it. We need that encouragement. Yeah. But uh, the better you prepare yourself, the more likely you are to have a positive reaction. If you aren't sufficiently well prepared and you sort of strike out and try to talk to people and you fall flat on your face, you kind of have to pick yourself up again. I mean, we, are gonna, we all have had those moments where we don't do so well, but investing time in input and comprehension, is, it means that you'll have a, a, a greater likelihood of a positive experience yeah. by speaking. So uh, one of the topics for this year is the year of the indigenous languages. And I remember you mentioning earlier, if you had the materials for some of your indigenous languages in Canada, you would definitely do them. Uh, what, what are your some ideas? And of course, my talk was also in, involved with uh, the indigenous languages of Taiwan. So maybe there's something else we can, we can talk about this. Um, do you think it's important that, um, that we provide materials for indigenous languages? Um, or do, do, do language companies have a responsibility, first of all? Yeah, and do you I, think that we I, should? I don't see it, I don't know Mark's view, I don't see it as a responsibility. Okay, right. I, I see it as, a, as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what's necessary, if I look at Cree, is we need a lot of content. We need people talking, natural conversations that we transcribe. Uh, I don't think we need, there probably are Cree grammars, I'm sure there are people who got funding from the government to produce, I, mean, I don't yeah. know what it's like in Taiwan, but you know what it's like. The, yeah. the government allocates $5 million for native languages and uh, consultants are competing for the money and out comes a bunch of stuff that's not very useful. What we need is people talking, transcribed. If we had 100 hours of Cree, 200 hours of Cree with transcripts, people can get started learning the language. And there are already grammars for many of those languages. Again, I don't know the situation in Taiwan, but I find what's needed is not more grammar, but more live, authentic content audio with transcripts. 
Yeah, and one of the problems that I think that, because uh, with many of the languages in Taiwan, they're ergative, and so there's this, this weird alignment with the verb and everything in the sentence, and grammatically, it's kind of hard for people to wrap their, head, their heads around. And so when you take an approach where we're going to come into a classroom, we're going to explain the grammar to you, and we want you to take a test on this, you get a lot of people that just feel like, I don't know how I'm supposed to, to acquire this language in a, in a reasonable way, in a meaningful way. Although I feel connected to this culture, I, I feel like there's still this, this barrier, this wall in actually getting access to being able to use this language in real life. But it seems that governments kind of seem to impose these, um, this, this sort of a, um, like one of the only ways that they can measure your proficiency in the language, right. like we have to set up this system. Right. You think that there's a, a better way? Uh, fundamentally, you got these languages that are endangered that people with the government or the, the native speakers or whatever organization would like more people to learn. And then the first, those, the, 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 their customers' first experience with that language is some complicated grammar explanation, which immediately turns off. Oh, a definitely. large percentage of those people. So right off the bat, your customers, 80% of them have left. And even when the language where, is where, similar, where maybe like you could just, French, maybe, exactly. They get the same feeling. Just play some of the language. Let people see, speak, people speaking it, to hear people, like get, 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 kind of get used to it. As you said about grammar, the explanations don't mean anything until you have had exposure. So I if you can it. listen, you can read, you can click around, maybe look up some words, get a, get a bit of a, so that now all of a sudden, okay, I have a bit of a sense of this language. Maybe I'm interested in learning it. <laughs> At that point, I might have a bit more tolerance for some kind of explanation, but to hit people right off the hop with the Yeah, I take the example, for example, of, of Arabic. And so I open an Arabic book, and it says there are seven kinds of verbs, and they start explaining the different kinds of verbs. I just flip the page. Like, there's no way I can deal with that. Uh, when I learned Chinese and Japanese, See, that, all... that's, that's the advantage you have right. and that a lot of uh, language learners don't know is that you can flip the page right. and, and jump over that and ignore it. Absolutely. But a lot of people, they feel like, I have to I have memorize to this, this. Or I have to learn it. And yeah, I have to flip go from the page. page one to, like, in order and, and the language has got to be taught in this order. Was it you or Alexander who says he'll like, read through a whole grammar in an afternoon? Was it you? No. Maybe it was Alexander. He'll read through the whole grammar in an afternoon, but not just to, not to, to like memorize everything, but just to get a, 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 yeah. a I big, a big layout of how this whole thing works, yeah. right? You know, there are seven categories of verbs in Arabic. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> I, I have no idea what that means. I, I now kind of vaguely know that. There's probably seven in English, too. Yeah, so, so but, and, and in, in Japanese and Chinese, I have no grammatical terms. I, I learned Japanese, I learned Chinese. Yeah. I, I now look at textbooks that people produce for Japanese and Chinese. They're full of all kinds of invented terms, grammar terms. So I think let people hear the language. Let kids watch cartoons okay. in uh, Taiwanese Aboriginal language. Let kids do it, and, and they'll figure it out. And at some point, you might introduce the grammar well after they've already absorbed the language naturally. And then in terms of, of endangered languages, you, you would think all the organizations that are involved in preserving endangered languages would be falling over themselves to share and help and you know like we're we're happy to add endangered languages yeah if yeah. people then the content exists like you talk about Crete I'm sure there are archives of audio and tech but whoever has those they probably won't give them to us because no we we had the grant and we created these and, and we have them on our, another grant we have them on our website where nobody goes and and like listen we have well, a website I, where people go I think it's one thing if <laughs> everybody know. who speaks that language agrees and says no we don't want to share this with the world right that's fine right no they don't but say if, that they, they don't, don't the say consultants that. say that well I'm I'm just saying that as as a a, a scenario right. right if everybody who speaks that language right. if there's ten people who speak that same language and say no I don't want to share this with the world right. okay F fair I mean yeah, you absolutely. you're the only ones who have it right but if right. the language is actually dispersed well enough you got a hundred thousand or fifty thousand or ten thousand speakers right. and you can't get everybody's consent and every right. and there are people who want to learn the language then why not why why not make it publicly available why not get share? the information Maybe. out there and, and whatever and I, content we have we, we use it and I would think also that in the context of Canada where the government puts this tremendous guilt trip on people you must learn French and very few learn French like ten years of schooling in French they can't speak French and by the big guilt trip, it's an official language, you must learn it. Well, if you're going to teach that way, why not teach an Aboriginal language? You have an obligation to learn Cree. 
because Cree is <laughs> well, part of go. Canada's history. It is. So you can have, they may still not learn it, but you got an obligation <laughs> to learn French and you got an obligation to learn Cree and, and do it, like listen to it and stuff. And, but not with and the sense learned, of I'm going to test you. You've on learned it. enough languages from yeah. all over the world that, that something adding throwing Cree at you would not add any other no. specific difficulty in your ability to pick up the language. I'm sure. If kids right. at school had to learn Cree and French, they'd be better at, fr at French because that as as it is right now, they only do the one language. They don't learn very well. So if they had another one that they didn't learn <laughs> very well, it, it might stimulate their brain a little bit, and maybe they find there you go. <laughs> what would it take to actually create, like you said, I, I like this idea, uh, cartoons and, and more stuff yeah. in, in the in the native language. I wonder what um, how much more research. Well, it, I, what, I think governments they spend all too yeah, much they money. They spend too much money. The doing first the wrong thing, is, thing. Yeah. we're gonna we're gonna. So uh, I mean, we've seen this in Canada. The government spends money to create a site where you can find translations from French to English. Google Translate's not good enough for you? you and know? they did that here in, in I'm sorry, over there in Taiwan yeah. with the um, with their website for all the Aborigines. We've got 16 recognized Aborigine languages. Right. And now there's a dictionary for each one and online you can search from Chinese to, to yeah. the language. And but it, if, if Google, it's not that easy yeah. to use. It's got its, oh, yeah. its oh, problems. That's the problem, right? The government's going to build a dictionary that's going to be work inferior to Google to the Translate, Aborigines. inferior to most dictionaries out there. Interface is going to be clunky. No one's ever going to find it, but they feel good about about making it. Yeah. That's, that's kind yeah, of unfortunately is, when, yeah. the, when, the, when the governments are involved. It's more of a feel-good thing than a genuine but, desire. But the to, short answer to, to your to question is, is Focus on comprehensible input. Don't focus on creating yet another grammar. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. And I think starting with, with your basic sentences, mm -hmm. right. stringing words together. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, identifying the vocabulary, the storylines. Yeah. Uh, all of these are extremely helpful. And I, and I love the storyline method as well, like, yeah. like you have in Link, because yeah. um, I, I buy books in right. languages that I like well, You kind of need you know. both. You need the you basic know. patterns, but then you yeah. need that all the vocabulary and, and yeah. seeing it all in context. And, and uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, that's, that's how you learn. That's how we think you learn anyway. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs>